Welcome, welcome everybody. We are here, uh, you're with Black Men's. We're here at the Dallas installment of Dapper Conversations. My name is Neandre Broussard. I am the founder of Black Men's Wear. Uh, I am in Dallas. I've been in Dallas now for 15 years. Uh, appreciate the love that's shown from Indochino to allow us to be able to have this conversation in our beautiful Dallas showroom here uh, in Uptown. Um, again, you can see you know, what, what they've done with this place and all the opportunity that, that you have with, with working with Indochino and getting that nice custom suit made. Uh, so appreciate Indochino uh, sponsoring us today for this episode of, Dal of the Dapper Conversations. My name is Justin Moore. I'm from Dallas. I'm an attorney. I practice primarily in the civil rights space, but I also do criminal defense. Uh, my practice is geared towards tearing down structural racism, and I'm happy to be here. Um, with my practice, I try to be dapper too, so I try yeah, to include that. Yeah, yeah, appreciate Nick that. fly while you fighting evil, man. Appreciate that. Devorge Webb, Dallas Originato, from my great grandparents. Um, social media activist, photographer, skater, poet, mentor, and life student. Um, I'm Jacob Clayton. Um, I moved to Dallas from Chicago. So I just made three years last month, but before that I was in Shreveport, Louisiana, so I'm glad to be back down south. I am a style influencer, and I think what I'm most known for is custom clothing and suiting. So it's a little bit about what I do. And I'm excited to be here, man. Thanks for the invitation. As we are, you know, a part of Dapper Conversations, right, the goal of this is really just to create a safe space for black men uh, to be able to come and have conversations. Fortunately, with the latest news that came out with, with uh, something that we've, we've been fighting for and a lot, of, a lot of people have been fighting for, justice for Breonna Taylor, I feel like, unfortunately, we, uh, we kind of got slighted yeah. on, on, on that. And, 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 of course, with... with uh, you got slighted by a black man. And you got slighted by a black man. Yeah, that's, 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 that's yeah, that's yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna open up today with that conversation. Uh, and I, of course, I'm gonna start here. And then just kind of let us, I mean, what are your thoughts about what happened in regards to um, an indictment that was basically just something to say, hey, we, we indicted him. As I feel like as a prosecutor, you have one job when you take a case to the grand jury, and that's to present the case in a fashion that's even and unbiased. And when he had his press conference, he started talking about reasonable doubt. And it's funny that a prosecutor would talk about that because your defense attorneys using that for their clients. Prosecutors, they try to actually get around reasonable doubt because the standard is so high. What he should have done is he should have presented that case and the grand jury's job was to look at the evidence and see if there was enough evidence there to at least say, ah, oh, a crime could have occurred. Let's take this to 12 jurors so they can right. make a determination right. if right. these officers are guilt, guilty or innocent. You no, know, to your point, when you said I wasn't surprised, I don't think any of us were. But what I hate is the fact that I've become desensitized to the issue. You don't even feel the same anymore. You get angry, you get upset, and then it passes, right? And then another month from now, we're going to see somebody else on camera. And it's just this continuous cycle, which is not good for us, right? But I think that um, what, what bothers me the most about all of this is what we don't see. Even our president said this actually in an interview when someone asked him about black people being killed at a high rate. And he's like, well, everybody's being killed by police. And my thought was, and that's okay. Because these are generational punches that they're throwing. These are not regular punches. These are punches that your kids gonna feel. Now I'm scared to have a son. Right. I'm 26 and I'm afraid to have a son because I have to explain so much to him. Like, whose duty is that? Right. So I'm like, but the thing is, that's what makes me a strong black man because I still want to have a son and say, you know what, I'm gonna face this as different, it's not gonna break me. The question is, is why do we get desensitized to violence in this country, especially when it comes from the police? I think it's black folks and white folks who get desensitized. I think we have like, and you know, I work, I'm working a case right now and it's dealing with a young lady, she was being sex trafficked. And the question that was raised to her was why were you continuing that relationship with someone that was so abusive to you, but forcing you to do things that you didn't want to do? Um, and one of the things that we talk about in sex trafficking or abusive relationships, you talk about trauma bonding. The trauma is so, is so intense, it's so, it's so sophisticated, but it's also so violent, and you feel engulfed by it and you can't get around it. So you just succumb to it. And there's a bond that comes to it, right? And I, I think about that when I think about people like Daniel Cameron or, or, or folks who just you know, say that 
um, oh, you know, uh, you know, black lives matter, but I'm not really rocking with them because all lives matter. We hear black folks say, or even just white folks too. I think it's really one of those things where we we have accepted violence to be a part of our culture, so we try to we try to we try to dance with it, bro. But you cannot be uh, the lesser of two evils when you at war. He's like, we have to be able to say, you know what? If this don't happen, week three, when you get in, you you did you did you didn't got us over to this side. You'd have told us that. I'm gonna take care of you. If we don't get these results. When I meet new people, I ask them, what is your angle? Because yeah. people are not gonna tell you how they're gonna approach you. Yeah, what, <laughs> what's, your, what's your angle? Yeah. Because I need to know the direction you're trying to go. Not, not what you're conveying, what are you trying to be? Why are you around me? And so they're giving us a lot more opportunities that we've never had before. Right. Um, but again, that's not taking away the fact that I'm still black when I clock out. Right. Yeah. That's not protecting me at the crib. Yeah, I can't right. take the skin off. Yeah, yeah. this is permanent. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, as, as a man, you can wear a suit and still be a deadbeat. Like, I, I do this, um, I'm a public speaker as well. I do Dress for Success presentations. And I'll go into these schools, these colleges, these universities, these churches, these conferences, and I do this exercise, right? I pull up this black guy with tattoos, sagging jeans, you know, big beard, muscular. And I ask the people in the audience, what's the first word that comes to mind? Thug, convict, inmate, prisoner. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus Christ. And then I'll pull up a guy in a suit. Give me the first word that comes to mind. They'll say successful. They'll say poised. They'll say on time. They'll say rich, wealthy, CEO, college graduate. Mind you, I pull both these pictures from Google. So none of you know who, the, uh, who these two people are, but y'all just very passionately made judgments about their character based on what? Just, just this. The stereotype of that black people can't speak with a nice vernacular or have to use certain colloquialisms to blend in. I was like, no, that's not gonna be me. So outside of the suit, I just wanted to be a guy that was relatable. I wanted to be someone that was approachable because being black, you're not approachable. I'm gonna let you know that now. I found solace and I found harmony when I found that one reason to live. And that was like, oh, I'm black as hell. And I love it for real. Like, yeah. I legit love it. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm on the I'm same page. Back. I'm on the same page you are. Like, right. I show up the way I show up. But, I'm, and this is not for us, this is for them. Right. You gotta earn that. Well, well, so, well, black folk be like, yo, I'm gonna pull up in this fitted, these ones, well, no, no, Pete, let me bring these it back. Let me, jeans and let me bring whatever. It, let, it's let like, me, bro, you gotta earn the right to do that. Let me bring it back. We, we're raised in this culture of stereotypes, which is really scapegoating. Because all the stereotype is saying that, oh, you missed out on being successful because you fit the stereotype. Mm -hmm. It's really just a scapegoat. They're saying, all right, well, we never we never considered you anyways, or we're yeah. gonna put it on this stereotype that yeah. you fit. My job and what I do each and every day is I try to I try to shatter those structures that endeavor to say we're gonna keep these particular people outside of the marketplace. For sure, right. 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 Don't be doing nothing and, and chastising me for doing something in a suit. Yeah. Because what I'm doing is gonna benefit your ass down the line. <laughs> what is a life lesson that you live by? Um, that helps you with that impact. It is Romans 8.18. And that is, you know, pretty much saying the pain that you're experiencing right now cannot compare to the joy that is coming. Mm. That is the sole reason I wake up every day. Yo, 2020 was canceled. No, literally, like flights were canceled, trips were canceled, concerts were canceled, birthdays were canceled. 2020 was canceled. Yeah, but it's about how do you react to it? You know what I'm saying? So that is my life lesson. The biggest movements in life are silent. As far as you'll notice, a car can make a lot of noise as, so, as much as a gun can. The world is the biggest thing we know and it moves in silence. When change happens, you will not see it, you will not feel it. But change is also prevalent and as you move forward and you go up the ladder or down the ladder, don't think you're gonna escape problems. So just understand that as much as you move, the world moves by itself and it doesn't need your assistance. So it's going to move without you. So are you going to move with it or are you going to be mad that it's moving? I am moved and activated by love. Yeah. It's love of three people. So it's uh, my mother, my father, and my brother. 
and two of those have uh, passed away. Uh, my father just passed away uh, this past New Year's Eve. My brother passed away seven years ago. And every day I wake up, I think about my dad and my brother. Sometimes I wake up and you know think about them in the middle of the night. And their two deaths are profound, obviously because you know I love them because they're family. Right. But how they both left this world just it had separate context. My brother passed away seven years ago. Um, he was brutalized by police officers here in Dallas, mm. which kind of gives you an uh, understanding why I do the work that I do. What I wake up every day with and what drives me is one, you know, living in that purpose that my brother's life and his death gave me, but also doing it in a way that has a lot of integrity. I want people to say that I'm a good person like my father. And I want people to say that, um, you know, I took my brother's death and did something positive with it. I'm the best version of me ever created. And if you heard it on the last episode, sorry, that's, that, that's, that's, that's my life motto. Uh, because once I stop realizing that I'm not Justin, I'm not DJ, I'm not Jacob. Um, you know, Justin, dang, Justin's 6'5". I can fit a suit like crazy. Dang, I ain't six foot. I'm six foot, so how I'm fit, you know? And, and, and Juice, you know, he he put out content that people love, and Jacob can create a suit that's like, like all of these things. And, and if I spend so much of my time trying to fit into what your molds are, yeah. I lose out time into fitting into my molds, right? Yeah. And so once I realized that, and I started realizing the positivity that I have with focusing on who I am, you know what I'm saying? I, I, once that hit me and it really clicked, at that point I became successful in my mind, right? Successful not based on metrics, but successful based off of, this is what, this is what it means to be Neandre. Uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in. Appreciate you gentlemen for being here today. Cheers, um, Cheers. And I hope everyone, correct, cheers. <laughs> Uh, who, who don't drink with me? Yes, yes. Uh, I hope everyone stays safe. And again, one thing we started with, make sure you register to vote. Make sure you do vote. Uh, make sure you make your voice heard. And make sure you are supporting the next wave of those uh, who will be in office in the next four, two, four, eight, twenty, thirty 20, 30 years from now. All right. Thank you all.